But first, we take you to Baku, Azerbaijan, for highlights from the UIM Formula 2 World Championship. 20 drivers take to the water for the second round. Baku, Azerbaijan, for the second date of the UAM Formula 2 World Championship. 20 drivers in the water of the Caspian Sea, and let's see immediately how the qualifying went. Number 10 is the Swede Tobias Söderlin, AHO team. Number 9, Mette Bjarknes from Norway, Lundin team. Stanislav Kurzenowski from Russia is in number 8 for Riga team. Then the Norwegian Paul Birk Nielsen from the Steni. Ola Pettersson with number six and the white boat from Sweden from Skone Racing Team. Then the Latvian Ulvis Lagderis, Riga Powerboat Team is in number five. Johan Osterberg, number four from Sweden, Aho Team. For Team Azerbaijan, Jonas Andersson, Sweden. In second position, the Italian Paolo Zantelli for the Zec Team. And in first position, the reigning world champion Eric Stark from Getter Racing Team. Welcome, welcome everybody in Baku, Azerbaijan. This is the second heat of the UIM Formula 2 World Championship. A very busy championship with 20 drivers and 20 boats in the water for a three days of event. We say a busy championship which started in Stockholm last month and then this heat in Baku, Azerbaijan. The next race will be held in Brindisi, Italy, then Nottingham, UK and finally in South Africa. Let's get into action. In some minutes, the Baku race will start. Uh, now we see the standings before this race uh, and after the first heat of the championship in Stockholm. And the two times reigning world champion, Eric Stark, uh, is also in first position, having won uh, his home race in Stockholm, followed by the countrymate Jonas Sanderson uh, with 15 points. Then in third position, who occupied the third step of the podium in Stockholm, is the Norwegian Paul Virek Nielsen. So it's a whole Scandinavian podium for Stockholm race. Then again, Stefan Hagen in fourth position, the German, followed by the Swede Johan Osterberg. And then the Briton Owen Jelf from a long dynasty of racers. Then Tobias Söderling in seventh position with four points, followed by Ola Pettersson with three points, occupying the eighth position. We see again the following ones, it's Paolo Zantelli with two points, uh, nine position for the race uh, in Sweden and also nine position in the provisional standings, followed by Stanislav Kursenowski from the Russian team, uh, Russian athlete of course. And then again uh, a lot of drivers with zero points uh, but still uh, in the ranking. There's the girl Bimba Sjoholm from Sweden in the 11th position, then the Hungarian Belak Cerny and Winan de Jäger from South Africa. In 14th position, Chiara Rossi, another girl from Italy, and Mette Björkers, another girl again from Norway in 15th position, followed by the Finn Harry Leti. From Latvia, Ulvis Slakteris, uh, he's still at zero points, but he's a veteran in this discipline and he's a really strong driver, but now zero points for him. Then Tobias Muntekas from Norway, it's in 18th position. And finally, Eric Edin from Sweden, Manuel Sawyer Essig from Germany, Adrian Maniewski from Poland, Rup Temper, another veteran from Austria, and Simone Schuft, a girl from Germany, occupying the last positions. But power boating is not only about uh, drivers in the water and about the race. There's a lot of other people involved uh, and uh, people would need to, to work a lot uh, to make all of this possible. Of course, uh, one of the main aspects is logistics uh, with a lot of gear, a lot of stuff that needs to be transported from one venue to the other. Then a lot of local people will need to work uh, in order to mount and then dismount uh, all the uh, related stuff that need to be around uh, the, the race venue. So now we want to play for you this clip uh, showing you what happens in the days before the race.
So, as we say, the race uh, is about to start in some minutes. Uh, the boats are already uh, at the pontoon. And this person we see in the images uh, is Pelle Larsson from Sweden. He's the officer of the day today. This person, along with the UIM commissioners who come over, uh, nominated by the World Power Boating Federation and who come over at every event, are responsible of taking decisions about the main uh, uh, things regarding the race. Of course, the green flag, uh, which means uh, the race can start, uh, but then also the yellow flag in case of uh, accident. And if in case uh, uh, it's needed, also the, the red flag will stop the race. So talking about uh, yellow and possible red flags, uh, we need to talk also about safety. Of course, uh, in racing uh, uh, at any time, uh, a crash can occur, but the first point is that these boats uh, are really safe. First of all, there are uh, a lot of rules uh, from the World Power Boating Federation uh, who uh, oblige the teams, the boat builders especially, to, to accomplish to these rules. Uh, so the boats need to have uh, um, a crash site in front of the boat uh, with a program deformation. Then there's also an airbag, uh, uh, we will talk about this later, uh, I, I will tell you more about this. But also uh, the safety on the race field means that there need to be uh, rescue teams. There are boats displaced around the race track, so at any time a crash can happen, there will be immediately a boat uh, with uh, people, with divers, who can immediately rescue uh, the, the driver in case of crash. And let's see exactly the starting grid of this Baku Grand Prix. First position, Eric Stark, followed by Paolo Zantelli in second position. Jonas Anderson is in third. Then Johan Osterberg, fourth and fifth for Ulvis Slakteris. Six is Ola Pettersson. Seven, Paul Virek Nielsen. Eight, Stanislav Kurzenowski. Ninth position is the girl, Mette Bianknes. Then Tobias Söderling in tenth. Eric Edin, eleventh. And Stefan Hagen in twelfth. Then Owen Jelf in 13th position, Winan de Jager 14. P15 is for the Italian girl Chiara Rossi, followed by the other girl Bimba Sioholm in 16. Another girl, Simone Schuft in 17th position, then Bella Xerni number 18, 19 Rupert Temper, and 20th and last Dominic Stahl. But we have an update uh, from the very last minute. Uh, we will have two drivers who, for technical issues, cannot take a part uh, at this race. Uh, they are Stefan Hagen, who was in number 12, and uh, Rupert Temper, uh, Austrian, uh, in number 19. So there will be 18 drivers at the starting grid. And we'll be back in Baku for the start of the race after this very short break. And so everything is ready for the start of this race. Uh, we see Pelle Larsson uh, on his spot at the top of the pontoon. He has a clear uh, sight of all the race course. He's in touch, of course, with all the other people uh, located uh, around the race uh, field. We see one of the rescue boats uh, is in position on the left part of the race track. And so now they started. This is the Formula 2 World Championship in Baku. On the left of the screen, uh, Stark, Zantelli and Anderson, but it's a very good start uh, from uh, Osterberg and also from the teammate uh, uh, Söderling. A very bad start from Paul Virek Nielsen. We see Eric Stark uh, losing a lot of position, uh, his boat uh, uh, shaking too much. And uh, yeah, this is Eric Stark uh, in very dirty waters, Anderson has passed. And uh, we see, yeah, Paul Virek Nielsen is in the very last positions now. Uh, there's a very, very busy race field. You see uh, a lot of uh, waves of wakes. Um, this is Matt Bianca in one of the last positions, also for her, a bad start. At the first buoy, we see it's uh, Johan Osterberg uh, leading the race. Um, he's, uh, he has a very big advantage because he, he can run uh, in very clear water, not disturbed by the wakes. <laughs> and by the waves uh, made by other boats. That's a problem for the ones that uh, stay behind him. We see Johan Osterberg uh, on this racetrack. Uh, it's uh, quite a short racetrack. It's about 42, 45 seconds. Uh, this is uh, a turn uh, for Ulvis Slakteris, who has passed Paolo Zantelli. This is Zantelli. He started in second position. He's now third. We see Osterberg followed by the Latvian, the very expert Latvian racer uh, Ulvis Slakteris. He's been racing uh, for many years. He also uh, got the second position in the World Championship in 2009. This is Bimba Siolm on the right part of the screen with the silver boat. 
Uh, she's uh, overtaking. This is uh, number 82. Uh, he's the Belaxer in the Hungarian. And Osterberg uh, still leading. Uh, the first parts of the race, of course, uh, are really, really hard for the drivers because they have to avoid uh, to get involved uh, in, in any kind of crash. Uh, and there's also a problem with visibility, a problem with maneuverability. I told you about the, the waves. And uh, we, we've seen passing also Johan Anderson. This is Ole Patterson, a lot of sweet drivers. You see the turning, uh, the, there's different approaches. Uh, drivers can turn very, very tight. Uh, this means uh, less distance uh, to, to, to drive, uh, but at the same time, it means that they can lose uh, uh, speed. So uh, otherwise, on the opposite, uh, you can take the turn very slightly and very far, you lose uh, less speed, uh, but you also have to make uh, more distance. So still in the lead uh, with now uh, a good uh, a good lead, uh, Johan Osterberg, followed by Ulvis Lacteris. You see the setup of the boat uh, is very well balanced. Uh, when they turn, uh, it's a very large turn from uh, Osterberg. When they turn, of course, they have to maneuver the, the engine, the trim of the engine, which is the position of the engine, because in the turn, uh, you don't want the propeller to be too close to the surface, otherwise uh, it loses, let's say, loses grip on the water. So anytime you make a turn, uh, you have to put uh, a bit uh, the, the trim of the, of the engine down, and then uh, when you go back on the straight, uh, you put it up. And there's a yellow flag. We see one of the commissioners waving a yellow flag. We see what's happening. Uh, we didn't see from the image, uh, but we can see from our position there should have been a crash. Uh, and that's, yes, it's number 17, Simone Schuft. Uh, she capsized. Uh, we see the rescue boat uh, arriving immediately on the spot of the crash. Uh, we also see a diver uh, at, the, at the cockpit. You see, um, it's a bit relieving the fact that these boats, even in case of crash, uh, are always floating. We told you there's an airbag that engages in case of capsizing. We now see the rescue. We're talking about safety uh, every time, and we've seen uh, uh, exactly what it means. Uh, in just a few seconds after the crash, uh, two rescue boats are already on the spot. Yellow flag means, of course, that all the other drivers need to slow down. They cannot overtake each other. There isn't any pace boat uh, in this case, uh, but uh, it's um, admitted by the rules. Uh, if there is not the pace boat on the racetrack, uh, the first driver will give the pace to all the others. And in particular, he will be obliged not to go over 4,000 uh, revolutions per minute, uh, 4,000 RPM with the engine. These engines are two stroke, they can rev up to 8,000 for a top speed, uh, depending, uh, of course, on the use of the propeller that can go up to 190. We've seen Eric Stark yesterday get into 182 in his longest straight. So the speed is limited now because uh, they cannot rev uh, over 4,000 RPM. Is Johan Osterberg leading? All the others stay behind. We've seen uh, a nice gesture from the officer from Pelle Larsson. Uh, he raised uh, the finger like saying uh, everything is fine. So he got the confirmation probably uh, via radio from the rescue boat uh, that the driver Simone Schuft uh, is doing fine. That's good to know. Uh, we didn't see exactly the crash, uh, it didn't seem very hard, but you never know. Anyway, as we stress uh, all the times, these boats are very safe. So, Osterberg, Slakteris uh, and Zantel in the first three positions. They stay very close to each other, even if they cannot uh, overtake. This is a starting, we see Eric Stark uh, didn't start very well. The two orange boats, the teammates, uh, um, Söderlin and Osterberg started very well uh, and also Slakteris in the middle of them with a the yellow and red boat. Yeah, there's, this is Zantelli and Eric Stark uh, is behind. So once again... <laughs> uh, uh, we were saying the boats need to keep their positions. It's uh, um, a very tense moment because it's a matter of uh, trying to stay very close to the boat that's ahead of you because you never know when the commissioner that you see in the images now, you never know when he's waving the green flag again. And as soon as he waves the green flag, you have to start immediately, pedal to the metal and take back all the speed. So the closer you are to the one ahead of you, the better it is for the restart. 
another uh, image, another camera for the start. We see the, the black boat in the middle of the screen for Paul Virik Nielsen, a very bad start. We see a very good start, as we said, uh, for the orange boats of the AHO team. Um, this is also Belak Cerny in um, closest to our screen. And then they go to the first uh, boy. Still a yellow flag. Uh, these boats uh, float, uh, uh, as we say, because of an airbag. How does it work? The airbag uh, stays behind the shoulders, behind the back of the driver, uh, in the back of the cockpit then. And uh, it has um, a mechanism that um, it doesn't deploy immediately because let's say uh, you take uh, a big wave, uh, the boat can move uh, very suddenly and you don't want the airbag to deploy if, it, if there's no need to. So it has a delay time of two seconds. So after the boat has capsized, two seconds is the time to be sure that the boat uh, is not getting back to the right position and continue to race, but also to be sure that the boat is not sinking. In these two seconds, uh, the airbag waits and then it deploys and uh, it permits the boat to stay uh, outside of the water with the tip part, which is the cockpit. So the driver will be outside of the water and he can breathe even if he in the worst case uh, has lost consciousness, which luckily rarely happens. You see the water, uh, it's quite calm, a bit, a bit choppy just uh, on the outer straight. Uh, uh, the race has been delayed uh, um, about an hour because it was quite windy and it could have been dangerous for the drivers, uh, but then uh, uh, the, the starting flag uh, has been waved. Uh, now it's still windy, but uh, the water condition uh, um, is good. Um, we have different boat builders in this championship. That's Molgord from Sweden, that's Baba and Duck Racing, both from Italy. There's Clerici also from Italy. And uh, the drivers, of course, uh, uh, some prefer some boats, some others prefer some others. They say that uh, some of the builders uh, make better boats for calm waters, uh, and uh, while some other boats are better for uh, choppy and, uh, and uh, hard waves. But it also depends on the sensitivity of the driver. And we'll be on the water again in Baku after this very short. So, Johan Osterberg, uh, he started in fourth position and he finds himself now leading. It's uh, already some laps that we are uh, waiting for the green flag to be waved again. Uh, so, he's going at 4,000 RPM and that's the limit by the rules. Uh, he's giving the pace to all the other drivers uh, during the yellow flag. Uh, but he will probably think, uh, I was in fourth position, I had a very, very good start, a perfect start. Uh, now I am leading, I have to manage it in the best way. He needs to keep the concentration. Slakteris and then this is Zantel interposition. This is uh, Johan Anderson uh, from Team Azerbaijan. You see the cameras following him. Of course, uh, he's kind of a local hero as he's racing for the team of Azerbaijan, which is the hosting country. You see all the drivers, they take in different uh, paths because they don't want to, to, to be in the wake of the other boats. It's not a big point uh, during a yellow flag, but they need to be used that during the race uh, you really cannot stay exactly behind the driver who's ahead of you because you will run uh, in very, very dirty water. You will have all the wake, all the sprays and the visibility will be really, really bad. This is Mette Bjornkes, one of the four uh, women drivers that we have today. Actually three now that Simone Schuft has capsized. Uh, she's okay, luckily. So we have uh, Mette Bianches uh, and then we have Bimba Siolm and then we have Chiara Rossi. So in this race uh, it's three women drivers. Pelle Larsson talking with uh, another commissioner. Uh, they're still uh, pondering their decision uh, about uh, the yellow flag and the green flag. You see, this is not properly uh, um, a rough sea, this is just the waves uh, of the boats. Of course, the slower these boats go, the... <laughs> bigger the waves they make, because the faster they go, the more they float uh, above the surface of the water. So in this case, you see the boats moving a lot of water and making a lot of waves. But normally, when they go very fast, you will see they are floating, they are touching the water just with the last part of the sponsons, and just the propeller is in the water, they almost fly. 
And that's a point, of course, for a catamaran because also the shape uh, of the hulls and the shape of the, the boat itself uh, is made uh, to float uh, as much as possible. See, still a lot of tension with all the drivers. I'm sure they don't like this, this position. And now it's green flag again. Lucas Lacteris. Uh, he was almost, almost overtaking uh, Johan Osterberg. Uh, He's been, uh, he's been better on the restart, but Johan Osterberger is able to keep the position. So green flag now. You see Eric Stark. We've seen Eric Stark. Uh, we've seen Eric Stark. Uh, yeah, you see him there. But uh, yeah, on, on the far left of the screen is Eric Stark uh, trying to overtake Slakteris, uh, Dan Anderson. Then this is again, uh, yeah, Eric Stark in second position. Wow, wow, what an overtake for him also on the inner part of this yellow buoy. And then uh, making the turn, uh, so Eric Stark, the reigning world champion, is following uh, his uh, countermate, uh, Johan Osterberg. First and second position for the two Swedes. Then uh, it's uh, Ulvis Lacteris. Uh, yeah, Osterberg uh, has been able uh, to control the attack from Slacteris at the restart. Uh, very cold blood for him. So now he deserves this position. Then Eric Stark, what a restart also for him. And then in third position now, there's probably been an overtake, but we will see. We will see because it all depends on the trajectories. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. In third position is Jonas Anderson. He has overtaken Slakteris, uh, he has overtaken Zantelli, and is now in third position. Let's say, as we said, the local hero Jonas Anderson, also two times world champion in 2003 and 2004. This is the back position. This is Bimba Siolm with the silver boat. Uh, we see some sprays uh, from the boats. Um, so, Osterberg, uh, Stark uh, and Anderson, uh, three drivers from Sweden. Sweden uh, actually is the country with the, the, the most, uh, num the, the highest number of drivers today. And I don't want to say, but I will say also the, the strongest ones. This is Paul Virk Nielsen, boat number 88. He had a terrible start uh, from the last position, and now he's uh, retiring. He's going back to the shore. With boat number 51, it's Ulvi Slakteris, the Latvian. We, we say that he's a veteran. In 2012, uh, he was third in the World Championship, then fifth uh, in 2011 second in the World Championship in 2009, so he's really expert of this discipline, of this Formula 2. This Eric Edin with the red boat, uh, Owen Jelf, uh, we see, and still in the first three position, the, true, the, the, the three Swedes, the three country mates. Uh. Also, the, the, the short uh, track uh, makes it an interesting race because uh, we are sure that in some times, uh, in some time, we will see uh, the first drivers starting to overlap the slowest ones. So will be also some situations uh, when you need to have cold blood and you need to to, to 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 drive very carefully. And it's another yellow flag. Yeah, we see from our position uh, on the right part of the race field, uh, there's been another capsizing. I'm afraid to say, it's uh, the silver boat of Bimba Sjöholm. She had like uh, a problem and she capsized. We see the rescue boat. Uh, one is already in place. The other one is arriving immediately. We hope that everything is fine for her. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's very relieving. Uh, you will pardon me, but uh, it's always bad moments. It's very relieving to see Bimba. She, she's uh, out of the boat. Uh, she's uh, floating uh, and uh, the rescue people are all around. The divers are around. The boat once again is floating because of the airbag, so the cockpit anyway would have been dry. And so, yeah, it's the second capsizing. You see also the people uh, on, the, on the pontoon, the, the, the timing people from the other teams are very concerned, of course. This is the diver, this is Bimba, she's smiling. She's smiling, she's taking uh, off her helmet by herself. Uh, so everything is okay for her, of course, disappointment for this capsizing. <laughs> But uh, it's okay. This is the images we want to see. Of course, we don't want any crash to happen ever. But when it happens, this is what we want to see. We want to see immediately the rescue boats uh, on the spot like it happened. And we want to see the driver uh, getting out of the cockpit uh, by himself or herself in this case. 
luckily for Bimba it's fine. So is the second girl uh, out of this race. This is uh, again all the boats. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the moment when Eric Stark, you see on the left part, he had this wonderful overtake uh, over Ulvis Lacteris uh, on the outside part of this buoy, and then uh, you see here on the inside part uh, of the yellow buoy. Fantastic, Eric Stark. You can really tell uh, uh, why he's two times world champion, why he's leading the championship now. He won in first race in Stockholm. He started in uh, pole position today, and now he is in second position. We have to say, actually, he had a bad start uh, after uh, a couple of laps. Uh, he was eight. He probably had a problem uh, or with the reaction to the green flag or, or maybe a problem with the engine, uh, the revolutions of the engine or the choice of propeller. But he is now in second position. So Eric Stark back on track. And Eric Stark back on track, but also Bimba Siorma back on shore on her own legs. Uh, it's nice to see, so she will go back to the paddocks and she will try and understand uh, why she had this failure and this capsizing. Meanwhile, there's still uh, a yellow flag. Uh, also in this case, uh, the boat, uh, the silver boat of Bimba Siorma needs to be towed uh, out of the race field. You see choppy waters, but it's just the waves uh, made by the boats uh, themselves. You see how they float. There are the two sponsors touching the water, the propeller inside the water, and then the faster they go, the higher the boat floats above the water. This is one of the radio men, uh, all the, a lot of people involved uh, in, uh, in the teams, uh, in all the teams. Uh, and so they stay on the top of this pontoon that you see by that tent, that blue tent, and they have a, a, a live communication, a radio communication with the driver inside the cockpit. So they are here, they're very close to me actually, also me, I'm staying at this pontoon, and uh, they're all around uh, and they need to inform the drivers of what's happening around them during the race. The race commissioners uh, themselves and Pelle Larson in particular, uh, of course, uh, are informed of uh, everything that's going on on the race field. Uh, he will um, wait uh, not only with his eyes but also with the radio communication. He will be told that the boat uh, is um, being towed out of the race field, so the drivers uh, will be able to start again. This is Paolo Zantelli, he started in second position. Uh, he lost some positions now. Uh, we've seen uh, he was quite fast at the starting. Meanwhile, uh, there's a buoy. You see this buoy, uh, it, it's not very inflated. Uh, uh, it's probably been uh, hit by a boat, uh, and so they need to replace it. This will delay uh, a little bit more the race. Uh, we are already on a yellow flag, so we'll stay, I think, uh, in yellow flag uh, as long as the buoy is being replaced. And we'll be back on the water in Baku in next week's show. But stay tuned. Next World Championships. But first, we return to Baku, Azerbaijan for highlights from the UIM Formula 2 World Championship. 20 drivers take to the water for the second round of the season. It's 40 laps for the race today. Some of them uh, have been uh, done under yellow flag, but of course they will be counted. Uh, we still have uh, over 20 laps to go. So the, we will see a lot of action again. Eric Stark, of course, uh, he is the champion of the moment. Uh, he will not accept the second position and it's green flag now. And so you, we, see, we see Eric Stark on the outside part. Wow, what a driver, what a driver. Another perfect restart for him on the outside part. Uh, and he has taken uh, Johan Osterberg. Fantastic Eric Stark, still lifting the ball a lot, but not losing any speed. What a driver, he's really a champion. He deserves two world championships uh, and the leading uh, of the standings at the moment. Then uh, Johan Andersson, uh, he is uh, racing in front uh, of uh, his people in a way, because he's from the Azerbaijan team, so he wants to demonstrate a lot. This is the um, driver who started in last position with the black boat and number 18, Dominic Stahl. We've seen <laughs> Look at the lead that uh, Eric Stark has already gained uh, on the runner-up Johan Osterberg and on the other country mate uh, Anderson. Amazing, amazing. This driver is so fast.
And he's also really brilliant and very fast with his mind because after two restarts uh, un under the yellow flag, he was able to get positions. Johan Andersson uh, on the outer part, he doesn't want to be disturbed by the wake uh, of Osterberg, uh, but he still has a lot uh, of uh, space to, 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 to catch up if he wants to get the second position. While Eric Stark, uh, meanwhile, uh, has taken a very, very strong lead. What a showdown. Mette Bjornkes uh, racing in, uh, in dirty waters. As we said, there's this huge advantage of the one leading. And there's another boat retiring. This is uh, for number 41. Uh, so after two capsizing and after Paul Virg Nielsen has retired, we also have Win and the Jäger from South Africa who has to get back on shore. So it's now 14 drivers on this race. Still a very busy race. Johan Andersson uh, trying to attack uh, Osterberg uh, in every way. And then uh, Ulvis Lachter is in fourth position. Fifth is Ola Pettersson uh, with a white boat in number six. Uh, then this is Paolo Zantelli, started second, is sixth now. And then uh, Stanislav Kursenowski, and this is Eric Edin. Um, this is Matthias uh, Söderling, Tobias Söderling, pardon me. Owen Gelf, another veteran. What a race. We've been some laps under yellow flags, but of course the action uh, has been really, really a lot under the green flag. What a race so far. And Derek Stark once again uh, is making his showdown. He is the strongest. What can you say? What can you say after two restarts like that? But of course, there's uh, another uh, two times world champion in this. This one, number 14, uh, Jonas Anderson. Uh, every time uh, he's uh, at that buoy, at that buoy on the left, uh, closer to the shore, he tries to overtake uh, Johan Osterberg, but still he cannot make it. And he's like a, a, a prowler chasing his prey. Of course, he's racing for Team Azerbaijan, so he wants uh, also to show uh, to, to the people uh, who support uh, his team, uh, he wants to show his strength. Meanwhile, uh, it's still uh, the same Swede uh, drivers, the three country mates uh, leading the race, leading the pack with Eric Stark in first position, Johan Osterberg in second, uh, and Jonas Andersson in third. You see the very sleek lines of these boats. Uh, the cockpit is very tight, I must say. It's very difficult to get in, but difficult for us because we're not used to. Of course, uh, uh, for the drivers, uh, it's uh, an instant to get out. They can uh, uh, unlock the steering wheel uh, and then they are immediately out. And also different shapes. Uh, this boat, for instance, the white one uh, is made by Baba Racing by Massimo Rogero. It's a bit shaped like a shark in the tip. Most of the boats, uh, this one is Clerici boat, it's an Italian boat. Uh, most of the boats I was saying are from the Swede, uh, from the Danish builder Molgord. Uh, and uh, all the first three boats uh, are made by Molgord. Uh, probably in this condition of the sea, despite what some drivers could say, they are the most performing, the best performing ones. And so Anderson there uh, looking at the public and saying, yeah, I will get Osterberg, uh, I will get him. Uh, every time he makes a, a, a larger turn at this buoy, every time he tries to get uh, more speed uh, and get closer to Osterberg, uh, but he doesn't seem to make it. While Eric Stark uh, had a, a very quick restart after the, the green flag, after the last yellow flag, and he was able to overtake Osterberg uh, immediately. This is an overlapping now for the two drivers. Uh, and this is uh, Eric Edin. Uh, passing over, this is an overlap uh, on boat number 18, as we said, uh, he started in last position. So yeah, you, you see wh when the boat turns, uh, um, it also drifts a bit. Uh, of course, uh, you can make a tighter turn uh, if you suddenly, um, of course, you don't break, but like release uh, all of a sudden the throttle and then uh, you turn, you make a tight turn. <laughs> oh! 
that means uh, making more distance uh, but also losing a bit speed while uh, instead uh, if you take a large turn like Eric Edding did now a very large one uh, you lose less speed but of course you have to make more distance it's always uh, a choice uh, it depends uh, on how you feel it depends on the setup of your boat and it also depends uh, on the path that you need to take because of the boat ahead of you because you don't want to stay behind uh, you want to, to take a, a, a different trajectory in order to be uh, on clearer waters Johan Osterberg still chased and we see there's a problem uh, it, it looked like uh, on, the, uh, on the left part uh, of our uh, racetrack we see it uh, seems to me uh, Chiara Rossi with boat number 53 retiring going slowly back to the shore so that would be a big disappointment for the team after the other driver, South African winning the Jagger, also retired. Carreros is back to the shore while these drivers uh, are still giving their best. This is Owen Jelf, the last boat from Baba team is even more aggressive. Look at the tip of the nose of this boat. It's really like a very bad shark yeah we've seen uh, um, Anderson uh, has got back some um, some distance some gap uh, is closing the gap uh, on uh, Osterberg and uh, so we will see uh, um, very very hot final laps because Anderson uh, doesn't want to give up of course he's two times world champion so he's really expert also in managing all the different phases of the race uh, it's not the first time for him uh, to race under yellow flag, uh, to, to need to, to manage uh, the time, uh, the fuel that you have uh, and uh, to decide when is time, the, the proper time to attack. Well, at the same time, for this driver, Eric Stark, it seems there's no strategy. He just goes fast, fast and fast um, and mainly faster than anybody else. He's now overlapping the Mette Bionkes uh, with boat number nine. This, uh, red and white boat uh, jumping a lot uh, on the waves uh, and these are still second and third it's a good choice for team azerbaijan uh, to have um, jonas anderson with them uh, we spoke also with the responsible of the power boating association uh, here uh, in this country and he said uh, i want to have only world champions in my team this year is um, Anderson, uh, and we will probably have a second one, so not replacing Anderson, of course, but a second one, a second driver for the team Azerbaijan and another world champion. That's what we have been told. So this country is really believing in power boating and believing in Formula 2. And I'm sure that after this beautiful event uh, and how spectacular uh, it's been and it's mm, uh, being uh, at the moment uh, for all the country, they will be more and more convinced. So this is a time of uh, overlapping some other drivers. This is, could be also the chance for Anderson. He's getting closer to Osterberg, as you see. And wow, Anderson tries to, to, to get on the inner part of the turn. He made a very tight turn, trying to get close. He's trying everything he has uh, to overtake uh, Osterberg. And there's still six laps to go, so we will see if Anderson can make it. And we'll return to the action on the water in Baku after this very short break. So it's still 14 drivers in the race. Uh, it's not anymore uh, such a tight pack because, uh, of course, uh, with time the, the gaps uh, are like increasing. But of course, there's a matter of, um, of um, overlapping because the, the, the race track uh, is so short, so the, we, we, we've seen uh, a lot of overlapping. So we will see that the main point uh, is uh, will Anderson uh, make it uh, to overtake uh, Johan Osterberg? Will he make it to step on the second uh, step of the podium in front of the Azerbaijan people as he's racing for the Azerbaijan team? We will see. Uh, now he's got uh, a bit of distance again uh, after that fantastic turn on the previous lap. This is Söderling with the other boat. Uh, it's a good result for our team uh, so far. They are second position with uh, number two, Johan Osterberg, uh, of course, at the moment. Uh, and we must say uh, everything uh, um, has gone uh, in, the, in the proper way so far because uh, we have seen two boats uh, capsizing. <laughs>
Simone Schuft uh, being Bassiolm, uh, the rescue were uh, immediate uh, and uh, nothing happened to the drivers. Uh, so a perfect organization, perfect organization, that's uh, how an event uh, should be. That means uh, busy with a lot of action uh, and uh, just in case something happens, uh, nothing, nothing bad. This is Paolo Zantelli. But we are seeing problems for Osterberg. As we see, also Anderson is taking him, is overtaking him. There's a big problem from Osterberg. He's slowing down. What a pity. He was leading the race. He was in second position now, and he's slowing down, and everybody is overtaking him. What happened? Uh, we, we don't understand, probably, uh, almost for sure, a technical failure for him. He's still in the race. Uh, uh, we see he, he's not going back to the shore, but... but his pace uh, is not uh, as fast as the competitors, so he's losing a lot of positions. It's really a pity for him. So, Johan Anderson finally in second position. He tried uh, all he had uh, in order to overtake, uh, then he needed to wait for a technical failure. That's not the way, of course, a driver wants to overtake his competitors, but that's what happened now. We've seen uh, Osterberg slowing down all of a sudden, and we are seeing him still going, but still very slow. So there must be a problem. Uh, apparently, according to, to the wake, uh, to the to the sprays uh, that uh, he, the, the boat uh, is releasing, is probably uh, a problem with, with the engine, something with the trim of the engine. It seems the position of the engine is not the proper one. Probably it's a, it's a pneumatic valve, uh, and it's probably a problem there. That's what we think. While uh, uh, Eric Stark is still in the lead, his engine uh, is a bit shaking as well. Uh, he probably hasn't realized uh, what the problem for Osterberg is. Uh, he doesn't know that uh, the case of his engine is also shaking a bit. So that's not his concern at the moment. His concern is just to finish the boat and finish in first position. That would mean two victories out of two races for him. And uh, once again, let me say what a pity for Osterberg. Uh, as we see in him, uh, he's now back uh, uh, around the 10th position. So he's also risking to go out uh, of the points uh, for this race, uh, not to gain any points. When he was, uh, can you imagine, when he was leading the race uh, up to a certain point and then he was strongly in second position. He was like uh, resisting all the attacks from Anderson. So it's now from Sweden, Eric Stark, uh, first position. Uh, Eric uh, Anderson, uh, second position. Pardon me, uh, of course, uh, Jonas Anderson. Not Eric in second position, and it's Ulvis Lacteris uh, from Latvia who finds himself now in third position. And when we're getting to the very, very last uh, laps of this race, uh, yeah, what a pity uh, for, uh, of course, for Osterberg. So we have uh, Eric Stark, Jonas Anderson, all these lacteries. Then Ola Pettersson, a good fourth position for him. Paolo Zantelli, in the end, uh, is, is now fifth uh, after the, the start in the second position. And then Eric Edin, also a good recovery for him, up to sixth. Uh, Stanislav Kursenowski, Tobias Söderling, uh, and Owen Jelf. Uh, and then we will see uh, how it will end up for Osterbeck. That's the check red flag. And so Eric Stark, two victories out of two races. It's 40 points for him uh, in this season so far. 40% of the work uh, is done already. Then uh, Jonas Anderson for the team Azerbaijan. So in front of a public who was really cheering him in second position. Then Ulvis Lakteris, uh, the Latvian, in third position. Ola Pettersson uh, with a white board number six uh, in fourth. Then Paolo Zantelli, then Eric Edin. Stanislav Kurzenowski is the teammate of Ulvis Lakteris in seventh position, so it's a very good uh, result for the team. Tobias Söderling with the orange boat, it's not the one that we've been seeing so uh, long time uh, in the leading positions, but it's uh, the other one, the teammate uh, of Johan Osterberg. Uh, it's in eighth position, followed by Owen Jelf uh, by Bela Cerny. And Johan Osterberg uh, from the second position in the end, uh, due to this technical failure, drops down to 11th position. Then uh, in 12, uh, Mette Björkes, the first uh, of the women racing today. Two of them uh, uh, are out, uh, so uh, two of them are in. One is Mette Björkes in 12th, and one is Chiara Rossi in 13th position. Dominic Stahl uh, is still uh, uh, ranked in 14th position, and then uh, all the others uh, had to retire from the race. Uh, 15th position is Winnen de Jäger from South Africa. Bimba Siolm, uh, we've seen her. <laughs> Uh, 
cheering at the public after a capsizing is in 16. Uh, Paul Virk Nielsen, Simone Schuft, uh, and the two who didn't start, Rup Temper and Stefan Hagen. I really hope that uh, we can work more and have a better setup because I didn't have any good props for this race, so uh, I'm very disappointed with the qualifying today. But in the race, everything was good, and Eric is the world champion, and um, so I mean, he did a great job, and he was very fast, and he had a perfect setup. So, but um, we're gonna push for a win in uh, the upcoming races. So. It was an incredible race, maybe one of my best races ever. And uh, the start was terrible, and uh, we had problem with the angle from the start from the Yeti. But I didn't get so much speed with me through the through the first uh, corner. But um, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed after that. So we were starting to you know re recharge again, to to starting to pass people, and then uh, the restart come, and it was like something from heaven obviously I need to 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 train on my starts to to get them better uh, and but the boat feels good and uh, it's fit my driving so I'm really happy <laughs>